Welcome to the Aparty Five Podcast, the show where we teach you how to use other people's money to finance your multifamily deals. I'm your host, Roderick Jones, and I'm excited that you're joining me here on another episode. On today's episode, we're talking about how to get the best financing for your multifamily deals. Let's get into it. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So getting financing for your multifamily deals can be a tedious process. And the reason I say it can be a tedious process is because there are so many moving pieces, so many moving parts, and so many documents that you need in order to complete financing for your multifamily deals. And most sponsors don't realize that the process is very tedious until after they go through the process. And by the time they got through the process, they're like, this is just how the process is, you know? And so we're going to start breaking down the multifamily financing process piece by piece over the next few episodes. And basically, this is designed to give you all the tools and resources you need to get the best financing for your multifamily properties. So that way you can ultimately use other people's money, such as the bank's money and the lender's money to go out and buy these large multifamily deals. So how do you get the best financing for your multifamily deals? In order to get the best financing for your large multifamily deals, you need to know how to read this. And what is this? This is a mortgage rate sheet. And basically, a mortgage rate sheet is one sheet that tells you what rates are for today. And this one sheet tells you what Freddie and Fannie's rates are. This tells you what Life Code's rates are. And it also tells you what the CMBS rates are. And if you don't know what CMBS stands for, it stands for Commercial Mortgage Backed Security. So that's that. Now, how often is this rate sheet updated? So when you hear lenders say yesterday's rate is not today's rate, they're actually telling you the truth. And the reason they're saying yesterday's rate is not today's rate is because the rate sheet is updated every single day. And why is the rate sheet updated every single day, you may be asking. The rate sheet is updated every single day because it is tied to certain indexes. And the indexes that we all know are the 10-year treasury or it's, tried, or it's tied to the 10-year swap rate, or it's tied to the five-year treasury, seven-year treasury, seven-year swap rate, five-year swap rate, SOFR, SOFR. It's tied to all of those indexes. And as you know, the indexes update every single day. And so when the indexes go up or down, that ultimately increases rates or it decreases rates. And so when the Fed says, we're going to decrease rates by 25 basis points, that means that interest rates should come down because they're decreasing all the treasury rates. They're decreasing all of that. They're pulling that lever to turn rates down. And then in turn, lending rates should come down as well because all the indexes just decrease by 25 basis points. And then when the treasury, when the Fed says we're increasing rates and they increase rates by 25 basis points, they turn that lever up, all the indexes increase. And guess what? Rates increase. That's how how rates are controlled and that's what they're tied to. So why is this important? Why is the rate sheet important? Why is um, knowing when it's updated and important and everything like that? The reason this is important is because if you know how to read a rate sheet correctly, then you know how to optimize your multifamily capital stack so that way you can increase the returns for your investors and you can ultimately decrease the risk of the deal. So let's get into this. How exactly do you read a rate sheet? And what is a rate sheet even comprised of? So when you look at a rate sheet, when you look at a rate sheet, you'll see that it's broken up into three sections. And these three sections are the top half is private company and life insurance company. So you have the CMBS market and then you have life co market. Those are that's the top half of the rate sheet. Then the middle of the rate sheet, you have the indexes. What is, you know, where are the rates coming from? What is the 10-year treasury doing? What is the 10-year swap doing? What is the seven-year? All of the indexes that the rate sheet is pulling from is on the second half. That's in the middle of the sheet. And then towards the bottom half, you have everything that Freddie and Fannie has to offer. So on the left hand of the sheet, left half of the sheet, you have the Freddie Fannie side. And then on the right half of the sheet, you have the Fannie side. And so 
It's broken up into three sections. Top section is Life Co. and CMBS. The middle section is the daily rates. And then the bottom section, or the bottom half, is Freddie and Fannie. So when you look at a rate sheet, it's going to give you everything that they have available for the major food groups of commercial real estate. And so when I say major food groups of commercial real estate, I'm talking about multifamily. I'm talking about office. I'm talking about retail. I'm talking about industrial. And I'm talking about hospitality. So all of those will be at the top of the rate sheet. But then what you do is figure out what industry you're in and you go specifically to that industry and figure out, okay, what are the rates for this industry? So for us, we focus on large multifamily deals. So then we would go to the first column of the rate sheet and we say, okay, what is multifamily? We'll look at multifamily life codes. What do they have to offer? Then we'll look at multifamily CMBS. What do they have to offer? And everything else on the sheet doesn't matter because we only focus on multifamily. So that's the major four food groups that's on here at the top half. They're, it's going to give you a breakdown of all the food groups, major food groups of commercial. Being that we only focus on multifamily, we'll only go to the multifamily section. So after you figure out your multifamily section, you'll start seeing you know, what they have to offer. And this, the terms that you're looking at will be on the left-hand side. So the terms that's going to be on every rate sheet is going to be loan size, um, LTV, the minimum DSCR, which is debt service coverage ratio. LTV stands for loan to value. Um, their available terms, whether they have five, seven, 10 years, all of that's going to be on the left-hand side. They'll have interest rate, spread, leverage, index that is tied to and everything. So all of that is going to be on the left-hand side of the sheet. So now that we got that out of the way, now we move on to the second half. Well, we're going to skip over the second half. We're going to move on to the third half, which is the agency section. This is where Freddie and Fannie is located. And so when you look at Freddie and Fannie, it's broken it up into three categories. You have your term, you have your spread, and you have your rate. And then you also have your tier. So it's broken up into four categories. You have your tier, you have your term, you have your spread, and you have your rate. So all of that's broken down. And the term is either seven years, 10 years, 12 years, or 15. Your spread is, is going to be anywhere from 1.90 all the way up to 2.30%. And then your interest rate is going to start lower and increase its way up. And don't worry, we're going to get into this and break down everything I just said. So Freddie breaks it up. Freddie and Fannie breaks it up in three tiers. You have tier two, you have tier three, and you have tier four. And so the difference between the tiers is how much leverage you use and your debt service requirements. So in order to get the tier two rates, you have to hit a 1.25 debt service coverage ratio and you can have up to 80% LTV. In order to hit the tier three rates, you have to hit a 1.35 debt service coverage ratio and a 65% LTV. And in order to hit the tier four interest rates, you have to ha hit a 1.55 debt service coverage ratio and you have to hit a 55% LTV. So that's the different tiers. Now you're probably wondering with those different tiers, what makes one tier better or worse than the other. And the difference is the interest rates. So you remember when I said knowing how to read a, a rate sheet helps you determine how to optimize your capital stack and it helps you determine how to mitigate the risk for your investors. So the tier two interest rates are the highest interest rates because you're getting 80% LTV and you have to hit a 1.25 debt service coverage ratio. That means that the lender is risking more capital to you so that way you can go and do a deal in order to, and, and, and in return for them risking more capital, you're going to pay a higher cost on the capital. Now, if you went down to tier four, which is 55% LTV and a 1.55 debt service coverage ratio, you're going to experience the lowest interest rates because the lender is not risking as much capital for you. And being that the, that the lender is not risking as much capital and it's not a risky deal, they can allow you to have the lowest interest rate. So what are some differences between the rates of a tier two and a tier three? Well, let me tell you. We're going to look at a 10-year loan, for example. So if you're, if you're going to get a 10-year loan for your multifamily property, and let's say you want to maximize the leverage, you want to get 80% LTV, 
and you want to hit the 1.25 debt service coverage ratio. Well, today, your interest rate will be anywhere, anywhere between 5.94% and 6.16%. That's if you're going to go 1.25 with the highest leverage. Now, let's look at that's tier two. Now, let's look at tier three. Let's say you want to get the same 10-year loan, but instead of maxing it out, maxing it out with 80% leverage, you're going to do a 65% LTV, and you're going to hit a 1.35 debt service coverage ratio. What is your interest rate going to be? So you can see here on the sheet, your interest rate will be anywhere from 5.79% to 6.01%. So off the top, if you were to max it out, your interest rate would be 616 and being that you go down to tier three and say you're going to use lower leverage and hit a 1.35 debt service coverage ratio, your interest rate immediately drops down to 6.01%. So as you can see, just because you use lower leverage, you can get a lower interest rate. Now let's look at tier three. I mean, let's look at tier four. Let's say you only want to use 55% LTV and you want to hit a 1.55 DSCR. What would your interest rate be for a 10-year loan? On a large multifamily deal. So if we go over to our rate sheet, we can see that if you only use 55% leverage and hit a 1.55 DSCR, your interest rate is going to be anywhere from 5.59% to 5.81%. And what is the difference? So you can see if you use the highest leverage if we look at the ratio and you hit the 1.25 and you hit the 80% LTV, your interest rate is going to be 6.16% on a large multifamily loan. But if you go down to tier two, no, if you go down to tier three and you hit a 65% LTV with a 1.35 DSCR, your interest rate significantly drops from 6.16% all the way down to 6.01%. Now, if you go down to tier four, your interest rate gets even better because if you use 55% LTV with a 1.55 DSCR, we can see that your interest rate drops down to 5.81%. So you can either use the max leverage and have an interest rate at 6.16%, or you can decrease your leverage and have your interest rate at 5.81%. So you can see like as you start looking at the different tiers and a different way to, to plug and play the rates, you can start optimizing your capital stack to say, hey, maybe if we use lower leverage and use more equity and break up our equity tranches, I mean, break up our equity in the different tranches, we may be able to optimize the capital stack so that way it works a little bit better. But you don't know that if you don't know how to read a rate sheet. You know, most people look at rate sheets and they see all of these numbers and they're just like, this is too much. I don't understand it. Can you break it down to me? But you as a multifamily investor who's listening to the Party 5 podcast, you're going to know how to read this rate sheet and you're going to know how to optimize your capital stack, how, how to plug this into your deals. So let's look at let's let's head back up to the top. So <clears throat> one, it's a fact, not a fact, but it's one thing that you will notice when you look at a rate sheet is that life insurance companies have the lowest interest rates on the market, period. They be agency debt, they be all of that. They have the lowest interest rates on the market. Why is that? One is because they're very picky. Most life insurance companies don't want to lose money. They just want to earn the money, earn a modest return on the money, but they don't want to lose it. So being that they don't want to lose it, they only do the highest and shiniest and best asset classes there are. So if you're doing multifamily, they're only going to look at A-class properties. They're only going to look at core properties. They're only going to look at the best properties in the market. It's highly unlikely that you're going to approach a life insurance company and say, hey, give me a loan for the C-class property so that way we can go do this, this, and this, and they're going to finance it. Very unlikely that it's going to happen. But the reason I say unlikely is because there's still some chances that it may happen, depending on your relationships and all of that. But it's very unlikely that will happen. But what is very likely for a life insurance company to do is see an A-class property or core property and say, hey, we can give you financing for that and we'll give you the best interest rate for it. So if most people come and say, hey, I want LifeCo money and they have a C-class deal. And I have to tell them, you won't get LifeCo money with the C-class deal, but 
here's the other, you know, here's other options for you with the C-Class deal. So when you look at the rate sheet, you'll see that life, co life insurance companies have the best interest rate and you'll be more likely to say, I want to target life insurance companies' money, and that's okay, but that needs to be a conversation because we need to develop a strategy around how you're going to target life insurance companies' money, what type of deals you're going to do, and how to present them. Because I will tell you that, <clears throat> and how you're going to present them. We'll leave it there. So let's go ahead and recap this entire episode. So in order to achieve the best rates for your multifamily deals, you need to know how to read a rate sheet. A rate sheet is something that you get from your mortgage broker or you get from your capital advisor and they just let you know what the rates are today. If you would like a copy of the rate sheet sent to your inbox every single day, you can visit www.apartify.co backslash rates and we'll get these rates to you every single day. Just drop your email in there and you'll get a copy of the rate sheet every day. Now, <clears throat> It's important for you to understand how to read a rate sheet because it allows you to optimize your capital stack. Sometimes higher leverage is not always the better thing to do. Sometimes lower leverage will get you the best rates, as we've seen today. Also, the rate sheet is broken up into three sections. You have the top section, which talks about life insurance companies and CMBS. You have the middle section, which talks about the indexes that they're pulling from, and then you have the bottom half, which is Freddie and Fannie, also known as agency loan. Once you analyze the rate sheet, you can determine which tier you need to be in in order to maximize your investor returns, and then you can plug and play your interest rate into your financial models as you're underwriting deals and submitting LOIs. So that is it for today's episode. Make sure you leave a like, make sure you leave a review, and make sure you subscribe to the show. And as always, if you got something from the episode, Make sure you share it with somebody. Tell them that you're listening to the Party 5 Podcast.